All right, so Nintendo has finally reacted to Switch hackers and homebrewers today in maybe an expected manner, but one which we weren't sure if and when it was going to happen because Nintendo has done various actions against hackers in the past. Obviously, most people know about the flash cart incident and how rampant that was getting on DS and Nintendo's various lawsuits against the flash cart manufacturers that Nintendo ultimately won. But by the time they won, there were so many of them out there. It was almost too late. It was more of a moral victory versus uh, one that actually prevented flash carts from being in circulation. But there's been other things they've done against the end user as well. Uh, we've had 3DSs get bricked, Wiis get bricked, DSs get bricked. Uh, Nintendo will sometimes do ghost updates to hacked consoles, essentially auto-updates, and brick your system. And there's nothing you could really do about it. And this is an inherent risk everyone who has ever hacked or used Homebrew just kind of understands. Outside of, you know, if it's your first time doing it, you obviously might not be aware of this fact, but it is something that Nintendo and other, you know, companies often do because generally your use of hacking breaks some sort of end user license agreement. Um, not that you, not that you're doing anything illegal. Uh, you cannot be jailed for hacking your system uh, unless you happen to be pirating games, and that's actually an illegal act. But just the act of hacking your system and running Homebrew is not against the law, but it can still be against the license agreement of the device. So Nintendo could still do things to your device. There are certain things, you know, by using a Switch that you just agreed to that you might not have read. And, and one of those things is that you should not alter the device in any way unintended by the manufacturer to run code that is not sanctioned by Nintendo. So what they're worried about isn't so much that you're running homebrew or that you're backing up your save files. I don't think Nintendo honestly cares about that so much as they care about the idea that in backing up your save files to your PC, you could inject code into those save files that when retransferred back over to the Switch could alter the games leading to hacked games or could somehow, some way, be injected into their online servers. This is why... What Nintendo is doing now isn't that they are bricking your systems. Instead, what they are doing is issuing error code 2124-4007, and that error code reads like this. The use of online services on this console is currently restricted by Nintendo. Please contact customer support via the support website and quote this error code, support.nintendo.com slash switch slash error. And what this error code is doing is preventing you from accessing the eShop or online gameplay so even though you can't go to the eShop and, and buy new games you also can't boot up Splatoon 2 and play online anymore uh, you can't interact with friends at all you know th this includes through the, the the friends app so if you wanted to voice chat with people on the Nintendo Switch online app you can't do that anymore because your account doesn't have access to online services uh, or and, and it says you can't post I don't know what post means I assume that has to do with social media sharing your screenshots out to Facebook and stuff like that uh, the news feed however is still going to be working because of course nintendo's still going to advertise to you and updating apps still works because again your system isn't bricked they are just not letting you use any of nintendo's online services updating uh is, is something that just automatically happens and they're basically saying you can still buy physical games for your switch still play them still get those games updated they still want you to enjoy the platform they just don't want you hacking so essentially you could you could have your hack system you can have your homebrew but in return, you're not going to be able to use any of the Nintendo online services. And anyone who's hacked a system, hacked a Nintendo system, knew something like this is happening and should almost be thankful a little bit that this is only Nintendo's reaction because if they're doing this, they could have just bricked your entire system. They've done it before. They could do it again. Now, Nintendo has previously reacted to this hacking by talking about how they're going to change out the chip, get a new SoC in there because the stock Tegra X1 the Nintendo Switch uses is so easy to hardware hack. In fact, all it takes is essentially shorting out a couple of pins, which is a very simple process. I'm not saying that you know anyone at home can just simply do it, but honestly, if you do enough research and do it, it it's a very easy do-it-yourself kind of thing. And and there's things you could buy online that actually uh, will make it even easier where you don't even have to experiment. You could just cut a hole and insert uh, insert uh, a little tool and it'll just short it out for you. Now, that's obviously not where hacking stops. That just gives you access to the boot process, which gives you access before the OS loads up. And that's where you can inject custom code. And there's a whole bunch of files out there you could use to in inject code and blah, 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 blah. But the thing is, is 
Nintendo changing the SOC to make it harder to hardware hack doesn't change the fact that people have still been able to software hack a little bit. doesn't change the fact that even with a, a new SOC, they're going to find a new way to hardware hack. And it doesn't change the fact that there's probably 20 million plus switches out there that are able to be hardware hacked rather easily through the, the pin method anyways. So... Nintendo looked at that and said, look, it's not good enough to just fix you know, the hardware issue. We need to make sure that people that are doing this are discouraged from continuing to do so. And they wanted to do it in a way where it didn't make your Switch completely useless, and hence why they're not outright bricking Switches. Uh, I don't think... I feel like maybe Nintendo's not bricking Switches because there are some reasons I feel like they understand why people are hacking. As an example, Mr. Attica out there, uh, you guys might know him from EWN Network, Joy-Con Boys for Life, blah, blah, blah. He, uh, he hacked his Switch not to do anything malicious, but to have backups of his save files. He's got 500 plus hours in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. He's not going to wait until uh, until the, the cloud service launches to have backups. He didn't want to. He, he has that stuff backed up on his computer. And there's a good reason for it. He carries his Switch around in his pocket all the time. He's talked about being at clubs and bars and having it with him. And you might think that's stupid, but it's fallen out of his pocket there. And, and he's just one drop, one unfortunate instant in a way from losing all of that save data because you can't take that save data off the Switch currently. And that's another issue you know that I have in general with how Nintendo's handling backup saves is that they're offering cloud saves, but in the meantime, they should have let us back up to a thumb drive to the micro sd card even but that's just not nintendo's way of doing things this generation so if right now i'm going to kind of throw this out to you guys you know what are your guys' thoughts on nintendo's actions here are they appropriate are they uh did, did they go just far enough did they go too far do you think nintendo shouldn't be doing this at all i'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say because i have a feeling that a lot of people in our community aren't really uh either they aren't keen on the hacking community uh and have no plans to hack their own system or if they are they they're, they stay mostly silent because we, we've talked about the hacking scene uh you know probably a handful of times on this channel and it's not something that i i foresee us continuing to to cover unless there's some breaking stuff uh, you know, like the new switches that go out there get hacked, like that might be something we cover. But Nintendo is very much uh, within their legal rights to do this. People are breaking the EULA, the End User License Agreement. And if people are wondering what Nintendo say, says when you contact them, because obviously the error code says to contact support, and you might think, well, if you just contact support and they can verify that all the hacked code is off the system, maybe they, they restore your access. Uh, instead, what Nintendo actually says is the ban will not be canceled because you have violated the EULA, the End User License Agreement, which says you will not alter your Switch with custom code, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that's it, it's just... Uh, it's a very uh, interesting pathway. Um, this is also how people are able to dump games, by the way. By hacking your Switch, you can dump ROMs over to uh, over to your PC, which I'm not saying people are doing that uh, to do illegal things, but obviously it leads to some people doing some illegal things, such as distributing the ROMs online, which is 100% illegal, uh, providing those ROMs online to people who are going to download and, and pirate them. I, I want to make this very clear right now because maybe this hasn't been clear in the past based on what some people have said. I am 100% against piracy. I'm not going to say I have never done it. But having done it myself in the past, many years ago in my youth, basically in the 90s, let me tell you, I felt guilty as hell and I'll never do it again. Because piracy to me is just really, really scummy. And I know some of you guys will come up with, with the, the, the outliers, the unique situations where it's literally impossible to get a hold of a game, even a legal copy of a game uh, for X reasons, or it's a game that never released, or, or, or this or that. Like I get it, and I, I don't want to dive into the extenuating circumstances too much, but just as a general rule of thumb, I'm against piracy, especially of brand new systems, especially of Switch games. I don't think it, it should be a thing that happens. I don't think anyone out there should be doing it. I think there's legit reasons to hack your system, back up, backing up your saves, being like the biggest one. Uh, but unfortunately, it appears that anyone who's hacked their system uh, better watch out because soon uh, Nintendo will be also issuing this error out to you and blocking your online services. Uh, and that kind of sucks. Anyways, folks, uh, I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime, and if you like this video, you know what to do, and if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button, subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you in the next one.